Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's Brown Bag webinar. This is Mark Dempsey from the National Convergence Technology Center, welcoming you to today's presentation of Help Me Help You, The Art of Persuasion. Our presenter today is Dr. Ryan Bradshaw. He is the Department Chair for Business Education and Technology, which is part of the Business, Industry, Logistics, and Transportation Division at Johnston Community College. Previously, he taught at Wayne Community College in the Business and Computer Technology Division, Ryan has also taught at the University of Mount Olive, North Carolina Wesleyan College, and American Public University as an adjunct instructor of management. In addition to his work as in higher education, Ryan works as a coordinator with the humanitarian group Society of St. Andrew, which is a gleaning and food salvage organization that recovers and distributes millions of pounds of food annually to those in need. So thank you, Ryan, for being with us. I will now stop sharing my screen and turn it over to you. All right, today's chat, uh, is about the art of persuasion. Help me help you, the art of persuasion, how to accomplish everyone's goals, and a little bit of background on this. The genesis of this is that I was at Collins College a few months ago, and I met with Mark and Christina, and we had a conversation afterwards. Um, one of my colleagues, Brian Worley, who's on the call, and I did a, a little skit about relationship building and how to accomplish goals working with people, and we had a discussion afterwards about this needs to be brought to a, a bigger audience. And so I was able to put together a little presentation and, and presenting that to you now. So we're gonna go through a few things. Uh, and I wanna draw your attention to this picture on the first part of the slide. Uh, this is my sister's wedding. Uh, Jennifer is my sister and she's the blonde in the picture. And the little boy is my son, Jack. And uh, as you can see from the picture, he was not thrilled to be at this wedding going through the motions of the ceremony. And I happen to be taking pictures on the other side. And you'll notice, especially in the top left of the screen, uh, Jack was just very dissatisfied with the uh, having to be there and not being able to do what he wanted to do. And so why am I showing you funny pictures from my sister's wedding? Well, I'll tell you about that in just a few minutes. And so what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about four facts about people, some Jedi mind tricks, finding common ground, building a foundation this versus that, needs assessment, earning trust, creating an emotional experience, following up, you want versus what they want, all about relationships, being unapologetically happy, book recommendations about me and some q and I know that's a long laundry list, but we're gonna go through this relatively quickly. And now it's being recorded, you can watch it again and again or share with fam family and friends. All right, so four facts about people, and I'll give you a little bit of context when I show you a picture. Uh, Brian Morley and I were also in New Orleans earlier this year uh, for a, a conference, and this is a gentleman that was uh, standing on top of his car playing guitar, uh, and I thought I would share that with you. So next slide is um, one of the facts about people is people generally do not care until it affects them personally. And what I mean by it is uh, there's so many it factors that that, we're, that we come across every day, but we always don't, you know, we don't always care about what the thing is we're looking at until we determine how it impacts us. And so, you know, we're a lot more likely to be engaged with a story if we're a part of that story. And so this is a picture from my backyard, basically. I live in rural Eastern North Carolina. This is my father-in-law taking my kids and some of my other family members on a wagon ride. Uh, and, you know, when I thought, think about things that affect me personally, and an example, uh, the example that came to mind was diapers. I didn't care about diapers until I had children. You know, I see diaper commercials my whole life. We all do. And, but until you start having kids and it really affects you personally, you start thinking about diaper quality. You know, you want to buy quality diapers so you don't have uh, issues to deal with because of that. Another fact about people is that people like to buy things, but they don't like to be sold things. And so uh, this is including ideas. And so when you're dealing with people and working with relationship building and working with persuasion, you have to understand that Everybody thinks their idea is the best. You know, oh, it's I came up with an idea, my idea is the best. It takes a rare individual to say, I'm willing to say my idea is probably not the best or may not be the best, and I'm open to other people's ideas. A lot of people like to be the genesis of their own idea, and if anybody else inserts an idea or uh, something, they, they're not immediately receptive to that. So the idea with this is to we want to create a situation where Ideas are jointly formed or seemingly jointly formed. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move along. The third thing about people is people prefer genuine over fake. This is my, uh, some of my wife's uncles, and these are the genuine article. Uh, there's nothing 
disingenuous about these guys. They're Eastern North Carolina. This is what they look like. And the reason I share this with you is because genuine is more memorable and it's more uh, it's something that people connect with. People have this intuition about things that are fake. And so if you're being disingenuous or fake in your messaging, uh, people don't respond very well to that. People like the genuine article. That's why testimonials and word of mouth are such an important thing. Um, when you hear a testimonial from a friend or family member, you know you're getting a genuine review of uh, something that is either bought or purchased uh, or product or service that you can rely on. So genuine is something I want you to keep in mind as we have this discussion today. And last thing is all of life involves sales. This is me at a college conference last fall doing a keynote address. And every part of life involves sales. When you're a kid, you have to convince your family or your parents, hey, I want you to buy me this toy or hey, I want to go do this. Uh, when you're a young adult, you got to convince your parents again, hey, I want to go to the movies or I want to go out on a date. As you become a young adult and start uh, dating more, you've got to convince people to go out on a date with you. Uh, you've got to convince employers, hey, you should hire me against the other 20 people that apply for this job. I need to be the one you picked. And then if once you're on the job, you need to start being able to convince people and sell people on the idea of ideas that you present for products and services or ways of doing things. So all of life involves sales. And so let's talk about Jedi mind tricks for a minute and persuasion. So Obi-Wan Kenobi was one of my OGs or originals uh, persuaders. These are not the droids where you're looking for. And so uh, this idea that he could just wave his hand and persuade people to do things was pretty magical, almost uh, force-like, right? And so for those of you that are on the call today, uh, tell me in the chat, do you prefer Star Wars or Star Trek? Just go ahead and write it in the chat. Uh, I'll be monitoring that. So Star Wars or Star Trek, it's, it's fine if you like both. I talked to Mark yesterday, and he, he actually liked both, so that's okay. But John, I want you to pick one for now. And so while you're thinking about that, for those of you that like Star Trek, which captain did you prefer? Did you prefer uh, Kirk or Picard? Just name one. Don't say Janeway. It's okay. Kirk or Picard? Which one do you like? I'll give you another few seconds, then I'll tell you my favorite captain, although I love both. I'm actually planning to go meet William Shackner at a uh, convention in July, and if the stars align, I'll go get my pictures taken with Shatner. So, all right. So when I was growing up, I was a Picard fan. I watched Star Trek: Next Generation every Wednesday night in my living in my bedroom. I had a little 19-inch CRT TV with the antenna with the the aluminum foil on the end of it. So I was tuning in to watch Picard and go through the motions. So while I'm asking you questions. Do you prefer Harry Potter or Neo from the Matrix? Which, if you had to pick one, which one would you pick? Are you more of a Harry Potter person or more of a Neo from the Matrix? Go ahead and put that in the chats. Harry Potter, Neo. Give you another few seconds to pick that. This is an interactive thing. You didn't know you were going to have to work today, did you? All right. So next question. Are you more of a Mickey Mouse or a Bugs Bunny? Go ahead and pick one of those in the chat. By the way, I'm more of a Neo. So Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny, which one are you? I'm probably more of a Bugs Bunny. I'll go ahead and tell you. So, All right. So, yeah, this was a head fake. I actually wasn't talking about these things. So we didn't just talk about Star Trek and Star Wars. We didn't just talk about Harry Potter and Neo. We didn't just talk about Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. What we actually did was find common ground. This was relationship building 101. And so when we talk about these things that we all find interesting or, you know, even if you didn't find any of that interesting, I would keep digging until I found something that we have in common. A good one is food. And I, I do like to eat, I'll admit. So, but everybody, you know, can relate to figuring out what's for supper tonight. That's a, that's an easy conversation starter and something to relate to. So once we establish common ground, then you have a foundation to build upon. This is also a great sci-fi series. And in the early stages of relationship building, you can call back to that foundation, you know, oh, you know, I, I know that you're a fan of this, or I know that you're interested in this, or I know this is your hobby. One of my previous bosses likes to kayak. And so we talk about that. You know, I personally have very little interest in doing that, but he's interested in it. And so because he's interested in it, I'm interested in it because I'm interested in him as a person. And so that is the, the tone we need to look at when we talk about persuasion is getting interested in the individual. So let's talk about this versus that, not yes versus no. So what I mean by this versus that is, do you want to buy a car for me today? Yes or no? More than half the time you're getting a note of this question. I worked in the car business for a few years. My dad owned a small used car lot. I worked for Toyota for a couple of years. 
And so if I go out on the lot, you know, and I could see the customer already, you know, dreading to interact with me, even though I'm a nice guy, they just didn't want to interact with me. Remember, people like to buy things. They don't want to be sold things. So, yes, they may see a car they love and they want to buy. They don't necessarily want to buy it from me. And so if I ask you want to buy this car from me, the answer is probably going to be a no. A better question is, <clears throat> do you prefer a re the red car or the blue car? This versus that. And so if I ask a customer that question, do you see yourself in a red or a white or a red or a blue or whatever, uh, this versus that, I'm getting a commitment. You know, I mean, sometimes they say neither one, this is not for me. And then I would follow back or turn back around and say, well, what is a better fit for you? And so uh, I'm trying to get a commitment because if the customer says, you know, this, whichever one, I can start going down a pathway. So when we use this versus that, 100% of the time you're avoiding a no question or no response. That's the goal. You don't want to hear no because the no is a barrier. And remember, the goal is relationship building. <clears throat> so here's another example. Should I put these pieces of equipment in the budget for this year or next year? Now, I know you all probably deal with budgets and, you know, you all have needs that, you know, for your for your organizations. And so we're, we're asking the question of this versus that. But these two choices have something in common. The commonality is we're, we're still getting the equipment. It's just as a matter of we're doing it this year or next year. And if we, if the administrator or the person that's overseeing the budget says next year, that's a commitment. You said next year we're going to do this. So I'm going to make plans based on that commitment that we're getting from that person. So here's an example of a drill down. Can you meet for a quick chat on either Tuesday or Wednesday next week? This versus that. Great. Tuesday sounds good. Can you meet in the morning or the afternoon? Once again, this versus that. Great. Afternoon sounds good too. Can you meet at 2 or 4 p.m.? So this funnel effect leads to an outcome you desire, which is the meeting. And so we're trying to uh, build that common ground, ask questions that are this versus that, and trying to achieve both your goals. That's what we're working towards. So how's everybody doing so far? Everybody doing okay? Hit me, hit me with a chat that you're doing okay. Just wanna make sure everybody's doing all right. Waiting on confirmation you're doing okay. All right, some folks are doing okay, they're still alive. Good, good, good. All right, boom goes the dynamite, we're moving on. Here we go. So let's talk about doing a needs assessment. Where needs assessment, this is such an important step in identifying what the other person needs versus what you need. If you always put your needs first, that's a losing proposition because most of the time, the other person doesn't care about your needs. They care about what their needs are. So when you approach them and you're concerned about their needs, that's interesting to them. There's value in that to them because they are thinking this person is here to help me with my needs. Therefore, I'm going to show up to potentially help them with their needs. Um, I tell my team, and this is this is not something that you hear from leadership often. I tell my team, you know, I'm here to help you get to where you want to be, regardless if you leave this team or not. I know it would be tempting to say, I want you to stay forever because you're great and I don't want to lose you, but you know, as a part of this team, but that's not a realistic expectation. So you've already set yourself with an unrealistic expectation if you're thinking that you're going to hold a team together indefinitely because people are going to leave. They're going to go on to other opportunities and you should be happy for individuals that, that seek out and achieve other opportunities because you're doing the same thing in your careers. <clears throat> that being said, this gentleman that when I went to Texas a few months ago, this is at Hard Eight. I don't know if, how many of you have ever been there uh, in Texas, but it was fantastic food. And as a North Carolinian, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say the, the Texas two, the Texas food was really, really good. And I, I would probably say better than North Carolina. You didn't hear me say that. If this, I know this is being recorded. Maybe the North Carolinians won't hear me say that, but um, Texas food was really good. But this gentleman that works uh, behind the counter there at Hard Eight, <clears throat> he's doing a needs assessment. He's finding out, you know, what do you want? What do you need? And he's making sure that all the customers are getting those needs fulfilled. And so let's talk about trust for a second. Like respect, trust is earned, not given. People don't trust strangers, they trust friends. Hey, Ryan, you were frozen for a while there. Can you go back to the heart eight slide and kind of sure. put it up there? Yeah, Thank you, you were frozen for a while, yeah. Sure, I'll just recap this to say that needs assessment is important. This gentleman that works at the heart eight uh, doesn't need his assessment. <clears throat> and he determines you know, what each customer is looking for and he's there to fulfill that. And if he served the wrong item, he didn't do a good job with the needs assessment. You know, customers have an expectation that you're going to be there and deliver what they desire. So moving on, trust is earned, not given. So it's just like respect. People don't trust strangers. They trust friends. 
And what I mean by that is if I show up, my proposition is to offer you something. If I'm trying to sell a product, service, or idea. You don't know me. You know, why would you trust me? Why would you believe in my product, service, or idea? The idea is to build a relationship and be unassuming. You know, I'm here to build a relationship. Maybe we can do business. You know, that's <clears throat> that's almost like a Jedi mind trick, you know, and, but the idea is that I want to get to know you. I want to earn your trust and then I want to earn your business. And so keep that in mind. Be, be a be friendly person. People like to respond to friendly individuals. So why the funny face well, that I showed you in the beginning? You want to create an emotional experience. Emotions are memorable. So this Super Bowl commercial had one mission to make you laugh, to create an emotional experience. And I remembered this ad because I'm using it in this presentation. So this is an emotional experience. 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 There's reasons why we see these things in our popular culture. And we remember these scenes because they're tied to an emotion. And so Geico, this is an emotional experience. Every time I see this Geico character, I think so easy a caveman can do it. That's an emotional experience. So why do we want to create an emotional experience? Why do we want to be memorable? Because memory is tied to emotion. I did a little bit of research on this. It'll be in the presentation. I'm not going to go over it. It's all kind of brain science and amygdala, hippocampus, what I'm actually going to leave to the brain scientists. I'm not going to get into all that. But you do want to follow up with your contacts. Don't make fun of my Hello Kitty calendar. I like my Hello Kitty calendar. I'm joking. It's not mine. But you do want to, that's, that's an attempt at an emotional experience to make you laugh a little bit. So you do want to have a follow-up plan. So if I meet a new contact that is valuable to me, it's an important contact, I want to schedule a follow-up just to touch base with that individual to say, hey, just circling back around, wanted to, wanted to just catch up with you, talk to you. Schedule a follow-up routine to, to keep up with that individual because relationships matter in, in your personal life. They matter in your professional life. All right. So help, um, telling people what you want has to include what they want. If you're all the time telling people, I need this, I need that, that's great. But people don't respond to that as well as does it include what they want? And so this scene from Jerry Maguire, help me help you. That's where I got the idea for the uh, the actual title of the presentation. It has to include what they want because people are not going to be engaged if it's all about you. You've got to make it about them. And so while I was in Texas, I was at Collins College. I uh, mentioned I, I met with Mark and Christina, and this was Ann Behealer. That's my colleague, Brian Worley. Uh, Brian Worley. And Ann, she taught, everybody teaches me something. And Ann taught me that it's all about relationships. She made that statement while we were there, and I wanted to include it in this presentation because it's important. It is all about relationships um, and people want uh, to do business with. They want to connect with people that are going to show up on time, do good work and uh, be somebody that is going to deliver. And so relationship management, I can't say enough about that. If you've got a good relationship with somebody, the persuasion part becomes a lot easier. It just does. And so helping others helps you. Reciprocation. There's this psychological trigger that happens that if I do something for you, you kind of feel inclined to do something for me. If I do something nice for you, I have an example. I went to, uh, I requested some data from somebody yesterday. It was like quarter to five. Within five minutes, that person was in my office with a bunch of data, handwritten on two pages front and back. And I was just shocked that we had this much data show up that quickly. And I said, the first thing I said is, I'm going to bring you a Starbucks coffee. I really appreciate this. I had a trigger of reciprocation. So how may I be of servant? Well, service? Be a servant leader. That's that's the takeaway from this slide. You want to be somebody that is constantly in service of others, and those relationships automatically begin to develop better. The persuasion becomes easier. And so, last thing, few one of the last things I'll talk about is be unapologetically positive. Yeah, I can't say enough about this. People don't like to be around negative people. I the older I get, the more I want to distance myself from negative people. You know, I just the drama. Please leave it. I just don't want to deal with that. Be positive. Be somebody that you want to be around. You know, be, you know, uh, there's a lot of challenges in the world that everybody deals with. So be somebody that's lifting people up and be positive. You'll find that the relationships are better quality. You'll find that the persuasion is easier there, too. So I do have a few books I want to recommend real quick. First one is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale, Dale Carnegie. This, if you're only going to read one book, I recommend this is it. Great book. I've read it a few times. I gave a copy to my colleague, Brian Worley, one of our other co colleagues, Bob 
Hildenbrand uh, has recommended this book too. Tremendous book. It talks about relationship building, persuasion, and influence. Great book. Another author I want to recommend is Seth Godin, What to Do When It's Your Turn Specifically. This book is more about validating yourself and not having others validate you. It's a confidence builder book. I love it. I recommend it. I've probably given away 30 copies of this book. I buy, I buy copies for 3 or $4 on eBay. I give them away. Great book. Uh, Drive. This is a book called The Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us by Daniel Pink. It talks about intrinsic motivation and connecting individuals with intrinsic motivation. Uh, it's a really powerful book. I read it about 10 years ago. Can't say enough positive things about it. Last book is Influence, uh, The Psychology of Persuasion. Really good book, uh, but I, I would rank the other ones above this. That's why I listed last, but a worthy addition to this list. So last two things, a little bit more about me. As uh, Mark mentioned, I'm the department chair at Johnson Community College. Previously was at Wayne uh, Community for about seven years in instruction there. Worked five years before that at University of Mount Olive uh, in their admissions department, assistant director, and then Walmart five years before that as um, uh, assistant manager. And some current things I'm working on, uh, we are part of the Build Academy. We are a part of the Mentor Connect cohort, working on an NSF proposal. Um, we just recently joined the Carolina Cyber Network and doing some fun stuff with those guys. And as far as my community outreach uh, that Mark mentioned, I do work uh, part-time with Society St. Andrew on gleaning uh, crops and dealing with food insecurity issues. So that's some things I do uh, outside of this, this talk. And there's my email. I'm happy to talk to any of you if you want to reach out. So Ryan, so have you used any, give us an example of using these tactics, these strategies um, in your job as a teacher, like either persuading for a program or persuading um, something, something for your students. Or can you give us an example of something you yeah. use, like, like a practical example? Absolutely. Because um, one of the things that's a hot topic in education now is employability skills and uh, otherwise known as soft skills. And what I want to impress upon all my students is that after you leave this institution, you go out into the workforce, you're going to have to convince an employer that you're the right person for this job. And like I said, you're going to have to convince other people in life, you know, uh, potential spouses or, or people that you're going to date or convince parents or children or family members or friends and colleagues of, of different things. And so the practical application is you need to uh, be able to build relationships, build rapport, um, have, have follow up plans and be able to um, use like things like this versus that instead of yes versus no. Uh, in order to get to an outcome that works for you, but also you have to keep in mind is a win for the other person. Like I said, um, it, going back to that thing, the it factor, people don't care about things until it affects them personally. And so you need to be able to communicate how, what it is that you're trying to sell them, whatever, whether it's an idea, a product or service, how it affects them personally and how what you have to offer is of value to them. That's one thing that's often missed is the value proposition. You know, people, you know, like when we do it, when we talk about admissions as an example, everybody wants more students in their programs. That's great. Well, I was actually mentioning this to Brian Worley yesterday. I was like, if I went out and polled uh, all our seniors in the county and asked them, you guys have been to, college, to, to high school, to school for 13 years, who wants to go to more school? I would not get many hands raised, you know, let, let me see a show of hands. And so I need to connect a why to that. I need to connect a value proposition to that. and not just be assumptive that people are going to show up. And so we have to be able to articulate the value proposition in order to um, motivate or inspire people towards whatever outcome you're looking for. So thank you, Ryan, for your time. And if you're watching the recording this webinar, please share, follow, and like us.